I stopped yesterday. <laughs> so, thank you so much. Welcome to my talk about writing a fast of Musk emulation in JavaScript. But I'm paying, well, it's more fun, I would say. Um, so, I'm a hobbyist. I do all this in my free time, mainly just. I'm a physicist originally. I work in the Max Planck UPC Center for quantum materials uh, in this part of of Vancouver, so it's a collaboration between the University of British Columbia and the Max Planck Institutes in Germany, and I, I'm here, so as you can see, it's a very nice area, so we have you know, beaches in the summer, in the skiing areas and so on, mountains in winter, uh, downtown is not that far away, um, uh, and also we have also Canada, so we have at least close, so half an hour from uh, this place here, you have already a chance to see bears, and you see exactly here the trash cans uh, that they are already they are safe, so 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 that, that they can't crush the food. But uh, I would like to talk about this website mainly about this project. So I started to well initially also to to learn. Uh, JavaScript and um, well, as you can see, it's, it's everyone who was in this page knows this is now a very advanced project. I worked on these two years on it. Um, uh, open risk emulation, terminal emulation, frame buffer, and you have several applications. One on the X window system, you have a program environment which I will show, a network, vagrant ones, and also games. So, but I would like to talk a little bit about the technical details of this emulator. So here's a short overview of how this is built up. So the main parts of this are mainly two threads, the master thread and the worker thread, um, which sends messages. Unfortunately, in JavaScript, you don't have any shared memory, so you have to use messages. Um, only in the master thread, I can use the user interface. In the worker thread, I can do almost nothing. I don't have any libraries or something. I can mainly calculate. Um, so here we have the several modules, terminal, keyboard, Ethernet, ATA, frame of the touch screen, and real-time token much more. Uh, they connect to the standard ways, they have the memory and interrupts and so on, communicate with the master. And um, I would like to focus now in uh, this half an hour on a few highlights here. So for the JavaScript, uh, the CPU about the file system and about the Ethernet, about the network. So, uh, why I wanted to buy JavaScript? Because it runs everywhere. This is by far the main reason. So, um, uh, this is why it's now so popular and we just opened the website. And also one reason I have also several other projects and which I want to show and this is simply everything which takes more than one click to show. If you want to have really views and so on, it's, it's very hard to to uh, get attention nowadays, and everything which takes more than one click, so it's really hard. So there are tons of very nice GitHub projects and so on, but you have to clone it, you have to compile it and so on, and run it, and then problem solving and so on, and then you, and it's nice to have one click. Um, JavaScript is considered as a bad language. I would say this is uh, partly true. So here I have some face cases, one, one, two, three, plus four, five, six. <laughs> it is one, two, and thirty, four, five, six. This is probably not, not what you want. Um, uh, zero is equal to an empty string. This gives the question, so this gives uh, true. But I would, I would say, yeah, there are such cases, but uh, another case is C++. There are so many options, and, and you can do so crazy stuff, but then the solution is simply don't use it. So they simply don't use the features. Simply use what's, what's usable, what, what makes sense, and so on, and just ignore such cases. So every language has, has such cases. Um, interesting is so there are at least four companies who build with a huge effort to uh, build really optimized, optimized compilers. <clears throat> um, well, if you write an emulator, there's one important thing, JavaScript is not typed. So, per definition, there are no integers, there are only doubles. I'm glad that they said that it's not, not just strings, so every number is a string, I'm glad that we put these doubles. Uh, so, this means that you have a finite position here for large numbers with 16 digits, has a double, and then you get the sounding arrows. Okay, this is 
here, but there's also something. So, of course, uh, compiler optimization, they, they try, if you use all the integers, they um, try to optimize it. But this means uh, that they have to check all the time for overflow. So if you have here this minus one, plus one, this um, does not fit into 32 bits, so most bosses are still 32 bit. And that means that they have to check it, and then it happens that they deoptimize the whole compiled internal code, and then it turns into a double. Uh, some browsers, well, I, this is now no longer the case, but last year that there were the question if they have support for unsigned ins or some, some already um, ended here with 7f and then, and then at the ball and then when you have this uh, highest bit z that it changed to, then it was a question if it was deoptimized or not. But we have logic operations, which is nice, so you can, you can always use them to, and here so this um, minus 1 or 0 gives you minus 1, and here this this is an, an unsigned shift right, and this gives you the unsigned numbers. Interesting is there are no typed variables, but they are typed arrays. So there is map GL, and then they said they need um, definitely typed, typed stuff and so on. So we have these um, typed arrays which we can use. But the solution is then to quite optimize code, use JavaScript as it would be a typed language, and we have to take care for every operation that the compilers definitely make sure that uh, uh, that it does not de-optimize to double. So um, there's now some new developments. First there's some something which is called use strict, um, which is usually there while JavaScript you can for example have uh, you don't have to define variables, you just use them and everyone knows that if you have a typo and uh, then this is considered as two different variables, and then you will search forever for an error, for the error, and use with this one way uh, to get rid of such um, things. So there's something new from here to 2013, the way to use ASM, um, which adds additional messages, error messages, on to uh, give you a guarantee for type variables, and that no deoptimization can our take place, it uses only our subset and is uh, fully compatible to the normal JavaScript code. Uh, so, why I say just error messages? Probably you have heard um, something, um, you have heard something else, or something like with asset you get native speed and so on, but let's see it. So, I have here Firefox and I have included with my emulator this asset keyword. I get 17. 5.5 MIPS. If I use the same code but simply remove it, I get 58.1. Well, this not a factor of 10, 20 percent. Maybe um, in Chrome, 60.7 MIPS. So this is also the reason um, Google said in, in one that they don't have to, they don't, they don't want to, they don't have to implement it because if you follow these rules, um, you get all, you get at least close to the same performance. The Explorer 11 is very good, 68, so this is already close to the 75. Interesting is that this pad here gives me already 80 minutes. So this was the i7 first generation. This one is uh, Apple A7 to what CPU, but it's interesting that yeah, the like Xeon CPUs and so on, this second or third generation of the core i CPUs gives me already 200 minutes here. So I get that, I can about 200 things here. Um, the syntax of ASM is a little bit nasty. So here you can see um, if you have an array, group 0, with a constant, you want to set the number 18. So what you have to do with ASM, there are no arrays, there is one key. I have here a pointer to the array. I have here my, um, my constant. I have to multiply it 4 because it is a int. 32 view, um, then I have to, every time I use the heap here, which is, uh, which is a 32 bit, then I have to, every time I have to add with shift y2, uh, so it's al always aligned and so on, so it's, has, it's, you know why it's called ASM, so um, the compiler usually does this multiplication by four, but here I have to do, I have to do memory um, allocation myself, unless I have the heap, so this is, but it works. 
that that you know you feel like yeah it's I wouldn't say it's everything is necessary but um, they do it but and they, it was never planned to, to use it to really program it by hand but I'm one of the rare cases who did it and um, there's a project M script who can translate here the LLVM compiler the C++ code to as a, a JavaScript code. Um, one example then is that go tos are needed, so but JavaScript don't have go tos, so they use switch case. So, so why can't you just divide three p zero p by two? Um, I, I don't understand why you can't just keep through zero p divided by four. And well, three. it's they want to guarantee that it's never be optimized, so they have to guarantee that that you never that that it never. Um, gets larger this addition here than uh, this 32 bit. And this is a logical operation. And we use here this no ops what I what I what I had here so that you have to use always uh, such operations to be sure that it's time. So these are the rules of of SM. Um, well just to be always on, on the safe side that it's time. But it'll be safer if group zero P is four times more. Well, this is a bracket, so this one, here's a bracket, this one is right. the last one. Right, so why do you always have group 0 p divided by 4? So you add it... Well, this is, now it, okay, this is a 32-bit view of the heap. This is a 32-bit view. And this one is just to make sure that it's, it's definitely a point that we can directly use to this heap. So what the, the internal, the, the C code compiler so on does is automatically. And this one is just a side because this is, well, it's... It's the index into into this 32-bit table, and but they don't. But they say, okay, we want directly the pointer, and therefore you have if you have to, to put this one in there. So for if you have the byte view of the heap, then you don't need it. Then or zero is okay. If you have a yeah, but you're saying to make group zero p be a, a word level, just take group zero p and shift it by two. You don't need to shift it by two all the time. Shift it by two. No, but this is already um, the correct memory pointer. This is I choose. Ready to okay. do it. So, that it. Okay, now let's come to the CPU. And I directly uh, start here with a comparison. So, there was a question why, there was a lot of questions why uh, this emulator is so fast. So, here I have now the proof how fast it is. So, there's, I compared it with two other emulators. The first one is probably the most famous, JS Linux, which is from Fabrice Mellard, 2011 who just, well, Quemo developer, so he should know how, how um, emulators work and how to optimize them. But um, he didn't really care about that optimization. But you can see here the times so of DD of, uh, I, just to get uh, one megabyte random values here, how many seconds it takes, and how to, to zip a one megabyte file here to uh, ESIP2. So you can see here, and this 86 is another emulator which came out last year in October, I think, also an x86 emulator. So, but you can already see that that this emulator here, this is one thing which makes this special. And for the question is why this emulator is so fast, and by far I would say there's one reason. Um, I open this is easy, and I mean this is the most positive sense. So um, there's no history in fact for X86, there's almost no side effect. And I feel one example, so just um, instruction decoding, the switch, and then here the end, um, ND, and here this is everything which I need um, for this instruction. And um, if you look at ARM, what you have to do uh, for the same thing, um, you can already see, so this is a logical n function for ARM from taken from emulator, I forgot from which one, but um, this you have to execute for one logical end. Uh, okay, there's a little bit more going on with flags and so on, but there are also uh, functions to get to get the register and so on, because you have this um, uh, register 15 is a, is a program counter, on, so you have, and this one is finally the, the logic end. So this is one, this is, this is one reason. So what I additionally do is that I neglect all the things which are not used if I would like to run 
Linux and GCC, so C++, CPU for example, used. Um, uh, underlying memory, I don't check for underlying memory access is good, this is only a small thing. But there's also some of history, so there are sometimes in specifications such sentences. Okay, this is now the atomic operation, and um, uh, this you can find in other architectures much more, and, and normally the, such a half sensor would mean that you have to add every load store and other check if you hit this one good. In this case, I can ignore it because this never happens, it's not necessary, but um, uh, normally with other architectures, one guy thought in such, such cases it might be a good idea, you get a little bit more performance implement and use it in one of one hundred million lines of code, and uh, then you have to implement it. But here, then we don't have to, so, so side effects are usually not important. Um, are there any downsides for such an emulator? So I, um, well, there are some parts which you have to consider, so um, uh, open risk is usually a big NDR, and where we, what we use is JavaScript, what I use, so, um, but this works in a little NDN machine, so we have to treat it, and what's the best way? So the nice thing is that all excesses are um, 32, that are aligned, and most of the excesses, memory excesses, are 32-bit. Um, well, the best way is first to just switch every four byte um, and to add it to the end. Yeah. What happens if you look at it that you end up um, that 32 bit accesses, you don't need anything special. So you can directly use um, your memory, your 32 bit view of the quantum access memory, and just use the address you are done. But what happens with a 16 8 bit? Accesses. Well, um, what we need is um, for if they have 16 bit view of the access memory or 8 bit view, you see that it's only an XOR what you need additionally to access the correct file. So, this is, this, is really, this is really a nice thing. Though, this will be any little any other stuff. If you want to write an emulator, it ends up then with 2 XOR for, for 2 accesses. For the 32 bit, you don't need it. So, this is so this is almost no additional cost. Um, additionally, the NMU, um, this, is, this is usually implemented in two stages, always well also of other architectures. So you have a, normally in RAM a full translation table provided by the operating system, and then you have a smaller one already in the CPU, the TLB. Um, uh, which is in this case uh, filled in uh, in, which is usually filled in, in software, but this is so often executed that I took this code and just wrote JavaScript instead, so, so to have a hardware here be filled. This is also, this definitely gives me a performance boost here. Um, what, I, what I did additionally is to add a third stage. So I introduced just uh, our TLB um, buffer with one entry. And um, you can see here how it works. So this is, and it's always the case. What what is what is um, to make the code has to execute as small as possible. So if you want to access something, you check first if the current page is still valid for instruction and so on. This is most of the time the case, and also for data, you access them in sort of an array next uh, by next to each other and so on. So this is a check, and if this is the case it gets a physical address by uh, this command. So you have, in most cases, in 90% of cases, or even more, you have just uh, here, XOR, um, shift left, and then a check, and here one, a further XOR. So this is, most cases, this is enough to, to translate it. Um, overhead of the delayed instruction. So this is something which is, uh, let's say, a hard problem. Um, uh, but this is very nicely solved here without almost any overhead. Um, uh, so the usual instruction pointer to implement, you have, in every emulator you have something like this, a PC plus equal form. So, so you, have to, you have to add to the program counter uh, at some place. And with the delayed instruction I had long time the solution that I, that I had another step in between. 
the PC for is equal to the next PC and then the next PC plus equal to the four. So this way I could I could set next PC to the next chunk position and then I had one iteration of late instruction and then I find the chunk. No, but um, how does it look like nowadays? So this is um, what it executes for each instruction. An endless loop, then this is a physical program pointer, and it asks um, if this is equal to if this is um, equal to a value, in this case I call it fence, so, so uh, I will tell it later what it is, and then um, I have here my an access memory, I, have, I, I get my instruction at plus four, and this is then the instruction decoding, and then you have the different switch cases. So this is everything what I have to execute. There's nothing more, and with this fence here, this um, uh, late instruction is completely cool. And I think this is one of the also one of the main reasons why this is so fast that you can definitely optimize, and this is true for every CPU in this way that that you um, that the um, fast pass one instruction says so. Then you understand why I get also 200 200 MIPS um, in JavaScript. Now the fence is usually set to the end of a page, so every time I'm here um, to at the, at the end of a page, I have to I have to. Uh, change my physical open counter, and um, uh, all the time I reach a chunk and so on, I have to set it that, that after the delay instruction I, I um, execute the chunk. So this is actually, I, I, like, I like this solution because this really shows you what, what's behind it, or what you have to do with it. You don't, you don't make any translation the way you work with the physical open counter here. Um, good. Um, uh, so this was the CPU, now it's come to the next highlight, I would say, so the question was in the end, so you open the website, you would like to load it, um, it should be fast, and I would like to offer a lot of stuff. So what is the solution? Um, um, so the question was, so I have a file system at the around 200 megabytes and 5,000 files at one hour the internet, I would like that you can start at least after 10 seconds. Well. Um, if you look at counts, what's, what's available, so how long does a du slash take over the internet, up over the load? And with this tools, if you have hundreds of folders, so normally this means that you, it's definitely something that you can grab a coffee, wait, um, with all the tools available. Um, the problem is um, mainly latency and not, and not finding the throughput. So this is in this case file systems and and this is not a lot of data, but a lot of latency. Um, for us, I need only a read-only file system, and I don't need multi-user support. So what I did, I set that in the end, okay, to be fast, I have to have full control over the file system. From the beginning, open, read, write, close, everything. Um, I used the, the Vildeo 9P interface in the kernel to implement a file system um, outside of the emulator. So this is completely implemented in JavaScript. This is a, like a 10FS file system, similar to it. Um, I load the whole file system layout, so the whole metadata, I load in the beginning. This is one of the first steps. Um, I have here everything which I need, the file name, the modes, the size, also user ID and so on, if this is um, other than root, if this is compressed and so on, I can do much, much more. Um, um, uh, open risk file is compressed really well, so I can uh, I use usually a piece of two, um, and you need for the whole file system only an ordinary web server. You will so just to understand how this looks like, how the whole booting process looks like. Um, I fear um, VM Linux, so the binary, which is piece of two. Then, uh, but parallel to it, I start with the base S file system. Uh, which is an XML file here in this case. Um, uh, then I start already loading everything. So this contains everything what is needed to boot, to, to, to get the login screen, so maybe PC box and everything which is slash EPC and simply the base directory is what you have. So uh, then it decompresses here, it loads an ex extended file system which contains a much more. So the preloads everything which is most of the time needed. So we see that uh, if Curses. Um, sometimes it depends if I use, um, it depends which site you open, it also on other stuff. 
when the clone runs, get some absolute in screen, but everything is there already in parallel, so this is this is how it's implemented currently. Unfortunately, the decompression routine is not paralyzed at the moment. This is a little JavaScript problem because I cannot, when I have a workers thread, I cannot start another workers thread in it. So I have to go to the master thread, and then he can create a new worker thread. So I have to copy messages all the time, the files around. So at the moment I don't do it. So every time it decompresses it, I have a small gap here in the emulator. But rather, this will be changed in the future. Um, this file system makes it also easy to just a one click to upload files to your home folder, to download a whole home folder as tar. And what I also did finally um, to uh, be my own tiny cloud provider, let's say, so you get uh, your own user ID, <laughs> you get your own user ID, and um, uh, you can click the sync button, and then it uploads it to, to the server, and every time you bookmark this one with this user ID, you just uh, you just get the same files which you synced. So, and you need them only a uh, maybe one PHP file on the server to, to support all of this. Um, let's come to the last topic, um, network. So I have, <laughs> yes, <laughs> so this is how uh, possible, so you have network access, which makes it, this is a uh, third really unique feature here. Um, uh, and only, so this, um, I have a nice citation from last year, so I have like housing the web, so I could have in your house with your house with you. Oh, yes. Um, so, as you can see, um, X Windows running with Dino, so you can use a web browser in, in your web browser. Um, well, how this works actually with the servers in the, in the USA, it's um, connected via web sockets, um, uh, mainly e just internet frames or tap device, so this is also not really um, something which efforts of their tools with. I think he used Python script. Um, I have a full working intranet, so if you want, you can have two open windows and log in via SSH or Tenet or something to the other one. You need only to, to have the IP address. Um, but there are major network applications available, so, so everything what you can see and probably more. So the whole busy box stuff is installed and much more. So open SSL I've installed with the certificates, you can, and you can browse here and even with the graphical. That you can't do. Um, just to show you what will be uh, what I what I plan to to do in future. So sound is one of the most obvious things. Um, it's basically implemented, but I've not activated it because I have still some timing problems. That from Stefan um, here the SMP support I would like to include. So. Um, uh, that was also the beginning of the year. Um, this um, uh, that we have a Debian port. So according to um, what was, uh, uh, Christian, yeah, is, um, there's only just one bug left to boot it. So otherwise, CCH boot works. But let's see. So I'm already right he's finished. So uh, I try to compile Firefox, but 70% compiled the more. The other 30% I have to rewrite. No, um, <laughs> <laughs> well, that is that's just, I, I end up at the moment with one bug which not even Google knows, so, so it searches for some, for some stuff, uh, it's not even written somewhere in the whole programming code, I'm so confused about this, but, but well, let's see. Um, then some other stuff, um, status, statistics, screen, and so on, so about TLB misses, for example, about the last syscalls, network access, and so on. I would like to add uh, maybe to have a state file or something, support more terminals that you can switch. In some way, also better user interface. The world you is two windows, but there must be a better way to present it. And then in the end, um, my you can call me crazy, but it's indeed, it's theoretically, it's possible to write a dynamic compiler for um, in JavaScript, theoretically. I'm not sure if, if, the, if the browsers would survive this. If you have, if you have 10,000 evil executions in one second, I'm not sure, but uh, let's see. So this is the last 
point. <laughs> so if you have so um, in the end I would like to thank especially you, Stefan, for the infinite half and um, Ben Burns for implementing uh, the network. He's now currently in Australia, but he's is also the relay server. <coughs> um, there's a website where you can develop and see with it. Um, this is from the University of Illinois, Lawrence and Wave and Vlad Gupta. Um, Jonas Bonn, I would like to thank he's not here for the Linux kernel support and then also Christian Svensson will, will implement next and for the open risk area distribution. At the moment I use my own. Let's see. So here I have on um, my last side just uh, some pictures of what's available currently and in this case I would like to use Huh? Yes. <laughs> so yes, thank you. So this is all very cool, um, but uh, I have a question for you. What would you do if you needed to implement a uh, JavaScript emulator for a 64-bit platform? Well, you saw the fast part. So each instruction in 64, you need then at least one, two additional instructions, one, two additional lines of code for every 64-bit. So you just break it up into two 32-bit words, not huh? the other. You, so you just break it up, everything up into two 32-bit words? Yes. Yeah. JavaScript supports only 32-bit, even in 64-bit. Uh, JavaScript is defined for 32-bit. Mm -hmm. the, the logical operations mm -hmm. are defined. So even here for the multiplication to 32-bit between 64-bit, I have to use special code. Mm -hmm. But still, it's, um, it's possible that this would reduce at least, I, I would say, by a factor of two. Be produced this week. So, this was also one reason um, why I'm looking for a 32 bit. Whereas, after I saw the JavaScript on support, so, so, yeah. so the goal was from the beginning uh, was optimization. So, I wanted to, to, to look what's available, about what's really possible with JavaScript. <coughs> to, and now, about on a Excel, new generation 200 minutes. So, this is. Pretty impressive, I would say. <laughs> so, I have this already fine, yes. Yeah. I also like developing inside it, like, <laughs> they get bugs and so on, are you like also developing C software on it? No, 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 this is for the JavaScript and the console. So, this is, in some way, it's pretty basic. So, there's not really a good development environment for this stuff. So especially I need this graphic cloud and I need I need this document object model from, from the browser. So I can't use Node.js or something. So um, it's it's fine. I mean yeah, but, well, I mean like in the current state of the development two chains of of uh, open like how do you know whether it's a JavaScript error or it's a two chain error? I don't know. <laughs> Well, I, I have I have uh, one safe core which is very compatible to OpenRisk, which has all the kinds of features that I have one which is really optimized. And then I just switch between this tool path and error. I just look up uh, in my safe core in my slow one, which takes 20 minutes. 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so and then I can uh, I can fast figure out what's wrong. But at the moment. But there are indeed problems. So um, last year to run the six window system, this was several weekends to figure out the error. In the end, it was a signal error in the Linux kernel. And I was not sure it could be, it could have been everywhere. But in the end, it was. How do you find it? I assume there's going to be a connection. No. What she did. In fact, output. This is just, just uh, um, print Fs, let's say. So. Okay. Well, if you're on this level, this is well. This one, this one took really, really long to run X. So the rest, the rest here, and well, this also Moodle tool chain. This is not, not a big deal anymore. Well, this one is the development C. So you have, so you have just an uh, editor next to it, and then you can click on Pi and run. You get error messages there. And this is a little over terminal. So. Um, so this is so it sends the data to the terminal, sends it, it starts GCC, it reads the error messages, gives you the error, so you can write your own drivers if you want uh, Linux drivers in, in the web browser if you want. So he's using this also for teaching G um, C for uh, the first course in C. 
Um, so it's very easy, just open this website and you can directly test it and once it's everywhere. This Elite Tool, this is interesting. Um, so this is from year 1992, it was developed for DOS and Atari and so on. Um, but one guy translated it to C, so he put the Atari code, translated it to C, and made um, all um, hooks into it to, to run it with SDL. And now we can, we can run it also in the web browser under OpenRisk, thanks to this guy. So this, this translation of, of Elite 2 is already, so there are several steps in between. So what are we going to do about OpenGL? Yes, I can. <laughs> I can I can uh, program our graphic drivers which just communicates with WebGL. Yeah. Yes, it is possible. And I would probably then take, if I would implement the M scripting code, has already something like this. So they have an SDL backend so that you can compile C code and, and which, which is compatible to SDL and they use it. So let's see, uh, maybe. So maybe I'm crazy enough to do it. So you thought <laughs> so so about it. Yes, I thought about it. Okay. So, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But at the moment, this is yeah, right. the Steve dynamic compiler work. This would be, yeah, let's see. So there are ways to do it. But at the moment, this is uh, a lot of, um, well, so a lot of performance is just lost by conversion of the frame buffer. So every the movie and so on, they have all different color formats and, and, the trans, and the translation and so on. This takes a lot of performance. So to get anything in real time. So there's indeed, uh, it's difficult to find the correct programs because otherwise there are a lot, 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 of, lot of nice games and so on that which takes 10 megabyte or 20 megabyte of data. I don't want, so I have to, so I have to take this uh, remakes which took only a few megabytes, which loads very fast and then the and yeah, Doom, Elite, uh, Toplon, and so on. So there's a limit. So I have, I run through the list what's possible, but then a lot of lot of them are simply for such a one click solution or not. Cool. Alright, mine's loaded there. Thank you very much.